Captain Marvel. Jeez, there's been a lot of fuss surrounding that film. There was some controversy over comments made by Brie Larson, then it got pretty mixed reviews, partly due to being trolled online, but then it started killing it at the box office, and I'm already exhausted with this. I'm not here to tell you what I thought about the film. I'm here to explain what the hell all of the drama is about. I've consolidated the information, and this is an explanation of every bit of the controversy surrounding Captain Marvel. But before I jump into it, hit subscribe. Just do it. So given that we're talking about about the MCU here, I've divided the information into phases. Let's start with the press tour controversy. Captain Marvel herself, Brie Larson, came under fire for some comments she made during her Captain Marvel press tour that included this. I don't need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. I want to know what it meant to women of color, biracial women, to teen women of color. <gasps> So, this caused some backlash because people and because internet. There will be plenty more on this later, but for now, it signifies the next phase of the drama we'll call the Rotten Tomatoes debacle. Rotten Tomatoes users started going off on Larson for that comment. For example, one user said, I somehow feel that Skull are not the enemy, but that I am, since Brie Larson has been careful to state she doesn't want the press tour to include types like me. Aside from the fact that they spelled scroll and Larson, Larson wrong, you get the idea. You have to keep in mind that so far in our little fairy tale, the film hasn't even been released. So when users say something like, terrible movie already hated it, direct quote, you can assume that some of the reviews will skew negatively due to factors that have little or nothing to do with the quality of the film itself. These comments are just a few examples. The film was getting seriously trolled on Rotten Tomatoes, a detail that will be very important later. Moving on. In response to the trolling, the backlash, and all of the hurt feelings, Larson said this. What I'm looking for is to bring more seats up to the table. No one is getting their chair taken away. There's not less seats at the table. There's just more seats at the table. Hell yeah, tables! So she followed up by essentially saying that she wants to include more diversity, something that Marvel has already been striving for, without trying to exclude anyone. Okay, moving on to the next phase of the controversy we're going to call the Rotten Tomatoes changes. So following all of this trolling, Rotten Tomatoes rolled out some changes in regard to the way users are able to review and discuss a film. For example, while users used to be able to comment on a movie before its release, in a fashion similar to the troll comments I read earlier, they now have to wait until the film's official release date. This was just one in a series of changes made to the site, and the timing, understandably, seems a little coincidental. It led people to believe that Captain Marvel was the reason for these changes. But Fandango president Paul Yanover, Fandango owns Rotten Tomatoes, has assured us that is not the case. Which brings me to our next phase, Captain Marvel kills it at the box office. People were uncertain as to how the film would perform, but it looks like no press is bad press, as it opened to $153 million in its first First weekend. As far as Marvel films go, it's not the highest of all time, it's not even in the top five, but it's still pretty damn good. Close to Guardians 2 numbers, and better than what we might consider to be second tier Marvel box office performances like that of Ant-Man. Not to mention, it wasn't doing too bad on review sites. As of Saturday morning, the day after its release, Captain Marvel had an A on CinemaScore, 79% on Rotten Tomatoes, with a 52% audience score, a 6.8 on IMDb, and a meta score of 65. Again, not the best numbers in the world, but certainly not terrible. Some people, however, are wondering if we can even trust those numbers, which brings me to the next phase of our drama. Nailed it. Rotten Tomatoes and YouTube algorithm changes. So you know that Rotten Tomatoes was already trying to combat trolls and that many people thought it was in direct response to the Captain Marvel backlash. Well, if you searched for either Captain Marvel or Brie Larson on YouTube, it defaulted to the news setting. So you don't get a random list of popular videos, you get more fact-based news stories and recent interviews. The fact that it directs you straight to this is unusual, which you know if you frequent YouTube. On the other hand, let's search Avengers Endgame, another Marvel property. Hmm, we get a list of popular videos. So a switch was flipped over at YouTube in regard to Captain Marvel, and the troll posts have been pushed further down into the depths of the search results. Trolls are trolls, we're not going to defend them, but inevitably this will also cause some honest, non-trollish YouTube videos to take a hit. Furthermore, Remember those changes to their algorithm that Rotten Tomatoes made? Well, it seems that some of those changes took effect later on. Specifically, Friday afternoon of Captain Marvel's opening weekend, when over 50,000 audience reviews were purged from the site. What? Feels a little shady. They explained. 
We have identified a bug in the post-release functionality for the movies that have released into theaters since our product update last week. Comments and reviews will only be allowed after a film's official release. Which some would say makes sense, you have to see a film before you spout your opinion about it, but they reassured us with this. Don't worry though, fans will still get to have their say. Once a movie is released, audiences can leave a user rating and comments as they always have. So that's about the gist of it, the end game of our controversy universe. When I started this video, I had no idea how much nonsense was surrounding this film. Oh, internet. Again, Rotten Tomatoes claims these changes are not in direct response to Captain Marvel trolling. But given the timing, it is fair to assume that maybe it sorta kinda put trolling in general on their radar? The film is performing well, I thought it was pretty alright, you should come to your own conclusions. Continue the conversation in the comments. Do you think the timing of these Rotten Tomatoes and YouTube algorithm changes are more than coincidental? Let us know! If you see the flick, go and give it an honest, unbiased review. Don't try to even the scales, and don't troll. We're all movie geeks out here, just trying to complain about things that don't really matter with integrity. Be sure to hit subscribe, and we will see you next time.